Now, I want to just say a couple of points, but uh, on the five points that Prime Minister uh, has put on the table, uh, we fully echo the importance of uh, reaching those aspirations out of COP23, especially the uh, facilitative dialogue, the, um, the, the adaptation funds to serve the Paris Agreement, and other innovative ideas, specifically also on the loss and damage to be a permanent, uh, to be included as a, a permanent agenda item of the COP, as well as its uh, subsidiary bodies. Uh, and we believe COP23 should address this and maybe uh, uh, focus on making this as an outcome of the conference. There is also the importance of looking at uh, of financing, climate financing, to make sure that we draw rules and uh, implement a Paris Agreement for new and additional financing uh, to cope with climate change, both mitigation and adaptation. Uh, there is the tendency to re, uh, reschedule ODA resources into our, uh, as climate financing. But uh, as Patricia was saying, there is an urgency uh, call for real actions, not simply rescheduling uh, financing from ODA to, to uh, climate financing. For small islands uh, with unique vulnerabilities like Tuvalu and many in the Pacific, Fiji as well as those in the Caribbean and other regions, there is an urgent need to ensure we have adequate and predictable uh, uh, financing for climate change. This year, uh, in the global, uh, in the climate action agenda, uh, there, is, there will be uh, events uh, in the days allocated uh, where we have uh, uh, oceans uh, feature in the uh, in the activities. Uh, for, for for that, uh, we. We, we have the agencies that are going to, to, to lead, uh, and of course we, we look forward to uh, participation. But let me assure you, Excellency, that uh, uh, we have highlighted uh, to the UNFCCC Secretariat that uh, in the thematic areas and as well as in, in the SDGs, we want to ensure that uh, Pacific Island issues or small island developing state issues are also uh, part of the uh, activities uh, organized. So uh, the oceans, of course, uh, is very, very critical, not only in terms of SDG 14, but of course uh, SDG 2 as well. Uh, so it's very, very critical that, uh, but um, uh, there has been some questions raised. Uh, why uh, bringing uh, oceans and why bringing in uh, the other SDGs, but of course I think this is part of the initiative of the uh, Secretary General and uh, the Deputy Secretary General as well. It's the, the linkages and the uh, overlaps uh, in between the SDGs uh, and uh, climate change and of course uh, the Sendai framework as well. So it will feature prominently. In terms of uh, food security and, uh, and uh, ocean conservation and management and fisheries, uh, that's a cross-cutting issue also. And uh, it, uh, the impacts of IU fishing also uh, results, if you like, uh, in uh, the, uh, the promoting uh, promotion of transnational crime. Is that because it's a cross-cutting issue and cuts right across climate change, oceans management and conservation. Uh, is, is, that, is there an opportunity where we can look at this and uh, deal with the vulnerabilities of also uh, small island states, particularly the Pacific, where 40% of our tuna resources are uh, uh, in the ocean? Oceans are something that's very, very important and close to every Fijian's heart. 
Um, we are surrounded by oceans in the Pacific, and uh, the resources of the oceans are our livelihood. So, uh, in fact, it's going to feature very uh, highly in the action agenda, but on the issue of IUU fishing, uh, you will probably know that uh, fishery subsidies um, are going to feature very significantly in WTO negotiations at the ministerial conference this year, and it is said that fish is, an, is likely to be a result of the WTO uh, conference this year. Having said that, it's not going to be complete plain sailing because the issues of special and differential treatment is something something that we really have to resolve in the WTO processes. That argument, that discussion, um, is being negotiated very passionately and very in a very dedicated way in the WTO. And it is, it's possible that we're going to get a good result at the WTO. Um, it is unlikely that you're going to get that argument at COP23, frankly. Uh, I don't think that COP23 is the, is the time, it, it is going to provide the time or the place to negotiate complicated um, arguments about fishery subsidies, whether disciplining fisheries is going to include fishing man management, uh, whether the Pacific, for instance, um, is going to uh, agree to management to be included in discipline. I don't think COP23 is the place for that. But what we can do at COP23 is maintain this vision of the importance of oceans to to us all in the world and the importance of protecting the environment as far as oceans is concerned and to ensure that uh, we maintain a great deal of flexibility in the discussions that we have as well as a lot of understanding about the importance of oceans to our people. Um, so that's what I wanted to say about IUU fishing. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador.